Good evening, beloved brothers and dear sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you in the mighty name of the one who is the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of life, the holy triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I greet each of you with immense joy and a holy kiss on this Christmas Eve in the precious name of God's beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the one who is called Emmanuel, God with us. And I take this opportunity to welcome you to our Christmas Eve virtual worship experience. We are certainly delighted that you were able to join us. And it is our sincere hope and prayer that a word, etc., a song is sung that touches your heart so that you truly feel the presence of God in this sacred virtual space. Our call to worship. Oh, come, let us worship and lift our hearts. Not because the world is good and last week was awesome, but because the earth is the Lord's and everything in it the God of the whole earth. Oh, come let us worship and raise our hands. Not because our lives are all sweetness and light, but because even those who walk in darkness can see a great light that brilliantly radiates from the one who is the bright and morning star. Oh, come let us worship and bow down. Not necessarily because God sometimes gives us what we want, but mainly because God always gives us what we need each and every time through the invaluable, timeless and unspeakable gift of God, which is Jesus, the Christ, the holy child who was begotten of God and born to a virgin named Mary. And now on this night, let us worship and praise the holy and triune God together in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah and amen. Beloved, our opening hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, Glory to the Newborn King.
Amen, beloved. Let us pray. Oh, God of love, you have brought us together tonight and blessed us with the very best of yourself. Open our eyes to the light of Christ, which glows in the darkness of a world engulfed in apathy, pain, and loss, a world separated from you. Speak to us now that we may hear the good news of your salvation. Bring us into the wonder of your presence on this eve of your beloved son and our blessed Savior's birth. Fill us with that bright and blinding light that never grows dim and help us to carry it out into this dark and dismal world. We pray all this in the magnificent name of the one who is the light that shines in the midst of the darkness, the one who was called Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah and amen. Our scripture readings, Isaiah chapter nine, verses two through seven. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them, the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all of the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Gospel Lesson, Luke chapter 2 verses one through 20. In those days, a decree went out from the emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and, was, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you was born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Now, beloved, I invite you in this moment to reaffirm your faith as we recite our Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Beloved, before I share with us our hymn of preparation, which is Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. I just want to take a moment and offer a word, brief word of introduction. Uh, for, of, of our preacher for this evening, who is none other than 
my beautiful wife, First Lady Jennifer Renee Butler. We certainly thank God for the gift that she brings. We thank God for her service and we thank God for her willingness to proclaim what thus saith the Lord on this the eve of Christ's birth. And we pray for her that God would use her in a mighty way as she offers us a message of hope. And now I turn to our hymn of preparation. Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. New light and hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing glory, 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 beloved, to the new born king.
Amen, beloved. Jesus, truly, what a wonderful child. I now turn our attention to the word proclaimed from First Lady Jennifer Brene Butler. God bless you. God bless you. The Bible says from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And so if God has done anything for you during this holiday season, I invite you to lift up your holy hands and give God a great praise for the Lord. Our God is good and he is certainly worthy of all glory, praise and honor. Well, my brothers and sisters, I will not be before you long. However, I have a small word for, from on high for you today on this blessed Christmas Eve. It is coming from the text of Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. And it reads for unto us church, a child is born unto us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. For the time that is mine, I would like to preach from the thought, Promise Delivered. Promise Delivered. Won't you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you've always been my strength and my redeemer. So now lower me down in the wellsprings of your joy and cause preaching to be easy. That somebody here might hear a word and say, I yield, I yield to the blessed baby Jesus. What must I do to be saved? Now did God consecrate our time together, anointed, bind us together, that we might hear your voice and be renewed. We thank you for all gifts because we know that good and perfect gifts come from you. So now have your way in this space, my soul says, amen. Promise delivered, promise delivered. Have you ever had anyone make a promise to you? Promise they were gonna clean the bathroom, promise they were gonna do some homework, promise they were gonna cover your shift, and then when came time to fulfill that promise, they were nowhere to be found. Imagine your disappointment, your confusion, and probably even your anger. My sisters and brothers, I stopped by to let you know that on tonight, Christians can celebrate we can celebrate the fact that our God makes good on his promise. Tell your neighbor, promise delivered. The scripture notes that unto us a child is born and that a son is given and that he shall have many names. How is the promise delivered? through the baby Jesus Christ. I'm so glad you asked. See, from the point of creation, God had a plan. And once humankind fell into sin, the Lord declared that God would put enmity between the woman and the serpent. You see, my brothers and sisters, this was one of the first promises that God would make with humankind. All throughout the Bible, God continued to make 
promises to those who kept his faith and did his will. He made a promise to Abraham that Abraham would have many nations. He made a promise to David that the line of Judah, the savior would come from him. How many of you know that on this Christmas Eve, God delivers promises? My God. In our lives, we can have so many promises made to us. Some promises people will keep and some promises people won't. But I'm so glad on tonight that my God keeps his promises. All throughout the sacred book of the Old Testament, God's promises are seen. We see that God's will saves, sets free, and gives the remnant to the people. God is a way maker, a promise keeper, and has been since the beginning of time. Oh, tell your neighbor, God delivered the promise. See, when Mary and her husband Joseph were became the parents of Jesus, God was delivering the promise. God had delivered the promise, but not in the form of high things. God delivered the package in a lonely manger. God was telling us, to look closely at the small things, the things that people cast out, cast down, and move over. That's where the promise is. God's promise is delivered through the love of a neighbor, through the hug of a friend, through the phone call of a relative. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God keeps his promises. God has delivered his promise of love. He's forgiven us, affirmed us, sustained us, and cared for us. All as an infant baby lay lying in a manger. More than that, my brothers and sisters, God has delivered the promise to equip us with a Christian strength that will close the jaw of a lion, part any sea like butter, and cool any fiery furnace, and make any cross we face as Christians a symbol of victory. God is not a man that he should lie. No, he is a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, a prince of peace, and a promise keeper. So as you open your gifts and enjoy the love and the laughter, Remember, God kept his promise and gave you the greatest gift of all, freedom in the baby Jesus Christ. God bless you on this evening. I pray your health, your strength, and that you find rest during this season of joy and blessings. Merry Christmas from my family to yours. Amen. Amen.
What a timely word. We certainly thank God that our Lord is one who keeps God's promises. Let us pray. Omnipresent God, long ago you sent your angels through the midnight of the sleeping world to tell the shepherds Christ was born in Bethlehem. Come to our dark world and stir our hearts to hear again the message of your love in Christ. Aided by your spirit, may we grow in faith and understanding of your purpose, and so be moved to wonder and to praise. O God most joyful, on this night of expectant wonder, we tread again the path to Bethlehem and to the child whose birth was heralded by prophets, proclaimed by angels, and welcomed by shepherds. Open our eyes to see in that infant your loving purpose and stir up within us the spirit of adoring praise. Embracing God in the quietness of this hour, touch our understanding with your Holy Spirit that we may know again in true reality the wonder of your love in Jesus Christ and through there was no, and though there was no room in Bethlehem's inn, help us to make room in the busyness of the world in our daily life that our lives may show Christ's love and our hearts receive Christ's peace. Jesus Christ, welcomed by working men and kings, come into our world and heal our deep divisions, that we may not be black and white, male, female, employer and employed, but the children of God, seeing you our Lord in one another. All thanks to you, generous God, for the gift of Christ, light in our darkness and hope of the world, whom you have sent to save all humanity. With singing angels, let us praise your name and tell the earth this story so that all may walk together, work together, eat together, and in the breaking of bread, one with another may feel our hearts and inflamed and our souls sustained. And so we humbly beseech you, gracious and merciful God, as we pray together in our respective places, the prayer Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, beloved, before I share with us our closing hymn and our benediction, I just want to take a moment to wish each of you a very, very Merry Christmas. If you are gathering with family and friends, or if it's going to be just you and Jesus, I pray that you enjoy the gift of the day as you reflect intently on the reason for the season, the one who was born in that manger, the one who is the fulfillment of the promise. Again, Merry Christmas. And now our closing hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, Over the Hills and Everywhere. Go Tell It on the Mountain that Jesus Christ is born.
Amen. Go tell it. Tell it to everybody. Tell it everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. Beloved, receive now this word of benediction. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in deepest night are lit up with a brilliant sight. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The spread of his influence and of his peace will never end. Therefore, go out into the world with great joy and the grace of Bethlehem's matchless child, the love of God who never ceases to amaze and the fellowship of the spirit who never wearies will be with you on this holy night and forevermore. We go now in peace to love and serve the Lord, the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost. Rest, rule, and abide with each of you henceforth now and forevermore. And we say hallelujah and amen. Take care. God bless. Be well. Stay safe. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>